Good morning, Manitoba. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour every Saturday morning from 8 to 9. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's look at what happened this day in history. February 14th, 1912, Arizona became the 48th state. February 14th, 1948, NASCAR held its first race for modified stock cars at Daytona Beach. February 14, 1962, First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy gave a tour of the White House, which was shown on TV and was watched by three out of four Americans. That's a pretty good audience. February 14, 1929, Sir Alexander Fleming discovers penicillin. After leaving a plate of bacteria uncovered, he noticed that the mold that had fallen on the culture had, ki- uh, had killed many of the other bacteria. So that's interesting. And February 14, 2015, Juno Award winner, Singer-songwriter Joey Gregorish is our guest on Food and Friends. Good morning, Joey. Good morning, Larry. Thank you for having me. Although an hour ago I was cuddling with my wife on Valentine's Day, and you have some explaining to do. But it is nice you to You know, be. she's a very understanding lady. <laughs> she is very understanding. Oh, you know, really. She's but, sad to say hello. So th- that's great. Hello and a big kiss from Janine. And how are things? Uh, things is good. Uh, we were just chatting. The weather is always the topic, uh, you know, of the day. And it's so nice after last year to think that we've got, you know, maybe two weeks left. What are the 28 days, I think, uh, in this month? Here we are at Valentine's Day. We've got two weeks left, and then, you know, the days are getting longer, and, you know, hopefully the sunshine will be a a plenty, and I'll be back on the tennis courts, of which I love, as you know. (laughs) (laughs) And it it has been a great winter. I mean, we got some snow in the last week or so, but... We probably needed the snow for the moisture. I'm not really sure, but we probably do need that. And you know what? The winter is well on its way. February 14th, 2015. Why? Anyway, go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) So you've been on the show once before a while back, and and people certainly know you. I mean, Juno Award winner, which is really cool. And I was a little disappointed you didn't bring the Juno Award with you today. Well, you know, I, uh, I did haul it you know, around at one time, actually when the Junos were here back in 2005. But the problem was that it's made of wood. And, yeah, and people tended to want to start a fire with it (laughs) because they were cold, so it's kind of dangerous. Actually, it's really interesting, uh, you know, to see how that award has evolved from, you know, what it was. It was actually called the Maple Leaf Award before it was called the Juno, and it was this metronome. It It was an actual big metronome with all with a plaque inside hmm. and you know telling you know the artist and the song and everything like that i really thought it was quite more attractive than <laughs> than the, some of the plastic dippity doos they had a little bit later so uh, you know I, I gave it to my mother uh you know for her to keep until she passed away and then we uh, took it back and it's on our our mantle it's it's pretty special absolutely it's special and you know, on all seriousness, if I ever won a Juno Award, I would carry it everywhere. And I, and I know you're, you know, you're not, you don't want to brag. I would brag. If I, well, you know, it, I would. The only problem is you can't wear it around your neck. Uh, you know, that's that's, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that pendant? You know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, yeah, it was a, it was an absolutely beautiful award, and and it, it you know, that whole thing is has become very, um, you know, ironic years later in the fact that you know I won it for covering a Neil Young song. Um, and that song went through a little bit of history, <laughs> believe me. Um, and it was ironic in the w- in also the sense that, you know, uh, Neil Young was a Winnipegger, of course. Mm-hmm. Neil Young at one time was, we, were, we weren't friends, we were acquaintances. And he was even talking about getting into helping us with uh, band management and, uh, you know, directing us when I was in a group called the Mongrels. And we'd all meet every once in a while. We'd get together at a place called Rip's Pharmacy uh, uh, way down on Corden and, and Wentworth. And uh, every once in a while, you know, Neil would wander in type thing. Um, and, you know, it, 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 the history of that is pretty incredible. When, uh, you know, he went to Earl Grey. I went to Earl Grey. I didn't know that till later. He went to Kelvin. I went to Kelvin. And then he left uh, to um, pursue a career in Toronto, and that led to the, you know, being with the Buffalo Springfield and, you know, eventually Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. And then, and and covering his song was, it never, it's kind of ironic how it happened because we had finished the album, but then they informed us that we were short one song. And we were sitting in the hotel room. We had about three hours 
of recording time left the next morning. We were sitting in the hotel room, and they said, you need one more song. <laughs> really? And I was just kidding around, and I love to tell the story where I started doing the Ed Sullivan show and, you know, mixing up characters and have them doing other things that they normally wouldn't do. And I went, well, ladies and gentlemen, for all you youngsters out there, here is Jose Feliciano singing Neil Young's Down by the River. Jose, come on out here. So I would start, you know, doing the Jose, you know, the rhythm <laughs> that he had. And I went, down by the river, down by the river. And the producer went, I love that. I went, and said, what are you talking about? You know, I'm just goofing. He said, no, that rhythm, that's fantastic. I love that rhythm. Can you, can you do that song in that rhythm? And I said, yeah, yeah, we, we can work that out. So... I started that rhythm on my Yamaha FG-150, I believe it is. <laughs> I still have it to this very day. We went in. I just played it by myself and sang it. We had a conga player, somebody that hit a flat back, uh, they call it a rim shot uh, snare. That was all uh, bass player, that, conga player. And my buddy and I doubled up the harmonies, so I never really heard what this song sounded like uh, because we didn't have time to finish it. I heard it a month later, <laughs> after it was finished. Uh, Isaac Hayes, uh, some of Isaac Hayes' musicians actually finished the tracks for us. Bobby Manuel um, uh, did the guitar work, and you know he traveled with Isaac Hayes, and uh, there was Marvell Thomas on keyboards. So I heard it a month later, and believe it or not, it was the it was the Maritimes that actually pushed you know, the record company on this as uh, the follow-up to my first song, Jody. And the follow-up was supposed to be Don't Let Your Pride Get Your Girl, which was pretty terrible, I thought. <laughs> but you can't, you know, record companies are, you know. So the Maritimes pushed it, and it also stands as one of the first songs uh, really by a Canadian. It was five minutes. Um, so the record, uh, Maritimes still played that, but we had to edit the song for the rest of Canada and eventually a Juno, so it was quite quite incredible. Quite that, that's a great story. Yeah. We'll be right back with Joey Gregor after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. I'm Larry McIntosh. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've had an opportunity to see our bright and colorful potatoes and onion bags at your store. Peak of the Market's new Sesame Street potato and onion bags feature Elmo, Bert, Grover, Oscar, Abby Kadabi, Rosetta, Cookie Monster, Big Bird, and Ernie, nine different Sesame Street characters. Along with the characters, you will still see the Peak of the Market logo, so you're guaranteed it is growing right here in Manitoba. We're very pleased to partner with Sesame Street on the Eat Brighter program. The Sesame Street Eat Brighter program is all about encouraging children and adults to eat more fruits and vegetables. So the next time you see a Sesame Street character, I hope it reminds you to have an extra serving of fruits and vegetables. We're back with Manitoba's own Juno Award winner, singer-songwriter, Joey Gregorish. So you have a granddaughter, is that correct? Yes, that's very true, Larry. I am now Kermit the Frog, reminding everybody to eat their veggies. I don't know why, I just like to do it. Well, you know, the Kermit the Frog is a Muppets, but he's, he's not, you know, a little known fact, he was on Sesame Street in the early days, but hasn't been for a long time. Yeah, uh, but still very, very popular character. Absolutely. I still love Kermie. Kermie. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, uh, sorry, I got sidetracked. The I was going to say, was, does your granddaughter have a favorite Sesame Street character? Uh, I think most kids today are pretty well driving their parents around the bend with Frozen. The Walt Disney oh, movie. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> let it go, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she is uh, just a huge, huge fan, fan yeah. of Frozen and all the, uh, you know, and all the characters in that movie, and apparently she's watching because they're in Calgary, so we don't get a chance, uh, you know, to see her very, very much. But right. we're <laughs> going to change that. In the future. She's just a little over one now. Oh wow! But yeah, definitely Frozen, absolutely her favorite, favorite movie. That and just recently, she seems enamored with the uh, the classic Finding Nemo. Oh, that's a classic. Yeah, though. that so, is that is really good. Yeah, and th those are the uh, the years that uh, w you know now is the time when she's starting to, you know, become aware of all these things. And those are the really special years that, uh, you know, it takes you back to your own, you know, children and, and all that kind of so stuff. So do you call her? Do you Skype her? What do you, what do, you do? Yeah, we her? do. You know, uh, Jody, my son, uh, 
you know, they, they'll they Skype and yeah. every once in a while. So, hi, yeah. I'm Granddad. And then she goes run screaming from me. Do you, so, sing, do you <laughs> sing to her? Or? We, uh, I, I do uh, uh, a song that I uh, used to do on the Skittle Bits album called uh, Little Rag Doll. Of, hey, ho, take me home. I'm a little rag doll. And then when you, you know, it's funny because when you think about the songs that you sang for kids, even back, you know, like even in the 80s and 90s, it's changed so much. There was a song I used to, uh, uh, used to sing about a child, uh, and the chorus was, Stay a broomstick cowboy, won't you please? You know, <laughs> like, you know. And uh-huh. kids today probably wouldn't even know what that is. That's probably true. Yeah. So, it, it, it you know, that has changed so much. But it, it's it's still fun to sing a song that, you know, you've created, and they're sort of, you know, rocking to it type things. So... She does have a copy of Skittle Bits Pop and Rock. That's Grandma right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and speaking of Skittle Bits, you brought a gift for a prize for our listeners. Two things, actually. 2015 repackaging of Together, mm-hmm. the CD, and a Skittle Bits T-shirt as a giveaway to our lucky listeners. So if you're interested in getting your name put into a draw to win this prize pack, please email me at Larry McIntosh, and McIntosh is M-C-I-N-2-S-H, at peakmarket.com before noon today. And in the subject line, put the new wedding song. Of course, in your email, you can put any comments or suggestions you have about Food and Friends as well. We love to hear that. But again, if you want to be entered into the draw for the CD, the 2015 repacking of Together, repackaging of Together, and a Skittle Bits t-shirt, which is hot off the press, uh, just send your name to Larry McIntosh at peakmarket.com before noon today. And in the subject line, put the wedding song, the new, we- the new wedding song, I should yeah. say, the new wedding song. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, a story that ties in both of these. It's really uh, a heartwarming uh, story in the fact that, well, first of all, the repackaging of Together, people should know this has just been, uh, just done this uh, package. And it's the, you know, the original song. Uh, Cut one is the original song Together. And then two is the instrumental, full orchestration. Oh, wow. So you can sing it to your loved one. You know, we'll send the lyrics if you like. Uh, so it's full orchestration cut two. And cut three, at the end of the song, is a personal greeting to the bride and groom. You know, hi, this is Joey, your wedding singer. There's a loving couple, love, oh, look, wow. health, and happiness. You know, uh, so I, it, it's sort of a multi-purpose uh, kind of situation. The song still lives on. Now, the Skittle Bits T-shirt... Uh, those were wonderful years for me, you know, uh, doing that show. The story that kind of ties into this is something I'm probably going to tell for the rest of my days in the fact that uh, there was a girl that uh, uh, was a fan of the Skittlebit show. She was five years old, and uh, she, as she grew up, she always, uh, you know, loved the show and uh, wanted me to sing at her wedding. Oh, that was her wish all these years. And lo and behold, last November, I sang at her wedding. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Skittle Bits uh, T-shirt. And it, it has, you know, those wonderful memories in the fact that, you know, she's been a fan for so, so long. And uh, that was her dream. And I, I just sometimes you kind of don't realize how special you are to some people. But you're honored to be. And uh, it was it was a thrill. It was heartwarming. And we're going to talk to more about together in the next half hour because Shelly and I is very special to us. But we'll come back to that. Okay. We're talking to Joey Gregor, and we'll be right back after this break. Happy Valentine's Day! Welcome back to Food and Friends. I'm Larry McIntosh, and it's time for our recipe segment called "Now We're Cooking." You don't need to write this recipe down, as is today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and in the Winnipeg Free Press. So you can get all the information from our website or the Winnipeg Free Press. Today's recipe is egg and cheese puffs. Egg and cheese puffs. And here's what you need for the recipe. Four eggs, lightly beaten. One third cup of flour. One tablespoon of baking powder. Salt and pepper to taste. One and a half cups of cheddar cheese grated. One cooking onion diced for best results. Always use Manitoba-grown onions. Combine the eggs, flour, baking soda, Salt and pepper until just mixed. Fold in the grated cheese and onion. Then add a small amount of oil to the skillet. Spoon approximately one quarter cup batter into the skillet. Cook until golden brown on one side, flip and brown on the other side. 
Continue until the batter is finished. Keep warm until served. And this recipe serves too. Again, this is today's recipe today at peakmarket.com and in the Winnipeg Free Press. And all the recipes on our website and in the newspaper are, have both metric and imperial measurements. You can also download Peak in the Market's free recipe app with over 4,000 recipes. And it's available for Blackberries, uh, Androids, or um, iPhones or your iPad. So you can download that to search for Peak Recipes. We'll be right back with Manitoba's own Juno Award winner, singer-songwriter, Joey Gregorish. After we take this break for your news, sports, and weather, we'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Larry McIntosh. Thank you for tuning in, and happy Valentine's Day. The Canadian flag is 50 years old tomorrow, February 15, 1965. There's an interesting story in how the flag prototypes were made. Prime Minister Lester, Beer, Lester B. Pearson wanted three prototypes to be made quickly so he could take them to his new residence. Since there was no one available to make them, the assistant purchasing director with the Canadian Government Exhibition uh, uh, Commission asked his daughter to sew them. She had made clothes for herself, uh, clothes, clothes for herself. however, she didn't even have a heavy-duty sewing machine. But she managed to make three different flags that evening for the Prime Minister to look at the next day. The new Maple Leaf flag, as we know it today, was raised on February 15, 1965. The following words from the Speaker of the Senate added further symbolic meaning to our flag. And he said, The flag is the symbol of the nation's unity. For it, beyond any doubt, represents all the citizens of Canada without distinction of race, language, belief, or opinion. The Canadian flag, which is recognized around the world, is 50 years old tomorrow. We're back with Manitoba's own Juno Award winner, singer-songwriter Joey Greger. So we were talking last hour together, the new wedding song. That's a very special song to a lot of people. Yeah, it has, and uh, it you know it still lives on. The, the thing that really um, I love about the song is that it is a, if you will, people's champion song. If it wasn't for uh, the people, um, it actually started here in Winnipeg. The ball started rolling here. And actually, at you know CJOB, hmm. uh, the story takes. I mean, we could probably take an hour to tell the story. We um, should have started at the beginning of the show. Yeah, then. we should have, <laughs> but, and we still wouldn't have time because you know there's so many elements to how it got started. Uh, but uh, realistically, I, the person I really want to thank the most, any close to cooking and veggies and everything, is Peter Grant. Uh, Peter Grant uh, was uh, uh, the program director at uh, CHMM when I was doing the morning show. Okay. Chamam, chamam. And uh, <laughs> he said, would you like to go back in the studio and, and record a song for charity? And I said, yeah, that'd be great. And this was in the, uh, in the 80s. And remembering, you know, the, the reaction that Together had in church when uh, Brian McMillan, a friend, and I, uh, wrote it for his wife at the time. She was fussy. She didn't know what she wanted. And remembering the first melody I'd ever written, I'd, I said, you're not going to be happy until we write you a song. And I went, on this day we stand together. And I stopped and she went, that's the song. That's what I want. I said, well, there's no song. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She goes, no, but I like, could you do? So Brian and I sat down and we rewrote the lyrics, taking the vows, on this day we stand together, pledge our love to one another. And that was in, believe it or not, 1975. And I sang it for them in church after the ceremony. And, and we also sang To Love Somebody by the Bee Gees, which was the only other song that she wanted, you know, but for the signing of the register, she wanted together. Mm. So, you know, we love somebody, you know. And so after um, people came up and they said, what was that song you sang? And I went, oh, you know, of course, the inferior complex, you know, the inferiority <laughs> complex. I went, oh, uh, uh, to love somebody. <laughs> no, 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 the other one, the other one. I said, oh, together, yeah, that, you know, we wrote that uh, for the bride. And, and uh, they said, well, c well, can we, you know, where can we buy it? We love that song. That's where it started in 1975. And then in 1983, when Peter Grant asked me if, you know, I'd like to go back in the studio and do a song for charity. I said, yeah, sure. And we went through every song, um, and we decided on one called Love Will Bring It Together. The producer is the late 
uh, wonderful man, Craig Fotheringham. And he was sitting there, and Craig, and I know I, this is not insulting, he's a very laid back guy. And, hey, how's it going, man? And he'd always talk like this. And, and genius, absolute genius musician. So we decided on Love Will Bring It Together. And then I said, and we couldn't find another song. We didn't want to do a cover song. I said, you know, here's a song that I sang in church. And uh, we wrote it, and it's an original. So I sang it for him. And Craig was leaning back, feet on the table, major silence after I finished. You know, <laughs> our lives will change. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then, ex- you know, expletive deleted, he went, that's a hit. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so we recorded it, and it still didn't get on the A side. We released Love Will Bring It Together on the A side because it was reggae, and reggae was really big in the 80s. So we released that. Coincidentally, the, th- the melody of Love Will Bring It Together, I stole and rewrote for Skittle Bits. Oh. Come on, it's time to get together with Skittle Bits, right? That was actually the melody for Love Will Bring It Together. George McCloy one day... Uh, in April said, hey, it's the wedding season and our morning man downstairs at our sister radio station has a thing called Together the Wedding Song. Let's see how it sounds, what it sounds like. So he played it. That started people phoning, 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 and we sold out every copy based on Together, the strength of Together on the B side. You know, so I really got to thank like Peter Grant and George McCloy and uh, from there, after we had sold every copy, about two months later, uh, I'd finished my shift in the morning, and, and uh, Peter Grant came in and said, uh, somebody long distance wants to talk to you from Nepean, Ontario. And who's that? And he said, I think it's Sam the Record Man. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so hello. Hi, this is Jeff at Sam the Record Man. We need copies of your newest uh, recording. And I said, I haven't recorded since the... The 70s, uh, you know, <laughs> to my recollection. He goes, no, together, the wedding song. I went, what? He goes, yeah, uh, CFRA is playing it, and the phones are ringing off the hook. To this day, Larry, I don't know who gave them a copy of that song. <laughs> that really started the ball rolling. So we had to press more copies just to send to Nepean, Ontario. And that was in 1983, 84. It still took us three years to convince a radio or a record company to release it, and I got one of the last one record deals. It was a forty-five deal, one of the last ones probably ever written up. And the A and R directive was: play it once. If you don't get a response, throw it in the garbage. The Ooh. result was gold record. Wow! We'll be right back with Joey Gregor after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Larry McIntosh. Thanks so much for tuning in. As I mentioned in the first half hour of the show, Joey has been very kind and brought together a, brought a package of the 2015 repackaging of Together and a Skittle Bits t-shirt as a giveaway to a lucky listener. So, Joey, thank you so much for bringing us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. So, if you didn't hear in the first half hour, if you want to enter your name to win the the CD, the brand new CD of the repackaging of Together and the Skittle Bits t-shirt, which is also brand new, if you're interested in putting your name into a draw, just send me an email at larrymacintosh at peakmarket.com before noon today and in the subject line, put the new wedding song. So, again, just email me at larrymacintosh and McIntosh is MC at peakmarket.com before noon today and in the subject line, put the new wedding song. So we have to talk about together. You, you came out with it. You were talking about it before the commercial break. You sang it just over three years ago at Shelly and I's wedding. Mm. And that, to to this I, day... You know, I'll never forget that. I, you know, when I when I uh, sang it for you and, and Shelly, I'll never forget. Do you remember what you said when I, I came up to you? You had tears in your eyes, and you said, Joey, my... My shoes are too tight. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a that was a, a beautiful night, and I'm I'm honored every time yeah. somebody uses that song. You know, uh, they it, it's an honor. It's just so special. You know, to have knowing that song is going to be special to those people for the rest of their lives, and really, you know, a wedding is that kind of a an event that it really has to go 
exactly, you know, the way the, the loving couple wants it to go, especially the bride. And uh, that was a pretty special night. And, and, and I, I want to tell you both that I'm, I'm so honored to know you and Shelly and uh, to have sung the song for you. And it was, it was fantastic. And to this day, when we play it on our iPod or we hear it on the radio, it brings tears to our eyes. I'm having a hard time getting this out. And when, when we had the Valentine's Day show, I thought, oh, we got to call Joey and see if he could do the show. See if he's in town. Can he do the show? And that meant so much that you could. Well, but, and, and, and I know it's not just us. There's, there's thousands of couples out there that that song's meant a lot to. Well, yeah. And, you know, the thing that amazes me is, and again, I call it the people's champion, you know, song, because if it wasn't for the public, really, I, 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 I'm not exaggerating. The A&R directive was play once. You don't get a response, you know, chuck it. And as soon as they played it, uh, I remember one of the first comments was a woman in Calgary had pulled over to the side of the road and wept because she finally found the perfect song for her daughter's wedding. You know, things like that. What it accomplished. um, And I was doing Skittle Bits. So it's, you know, it's kind of, unique and special that you're actually offering this as a prize together and the Skittle Bit shirt because, you know, it, it, both of those projects are so very special to me. I mean, when you sing the song for a, a little girl that was a fan since five years old and all of a sudden, you know, you're singing at her wedding years later. She, you know, she grew up with the, with, with the, uh, with the song and always wanted it at her wedding. But what it did accomplish, too, along the way while I was doing Skittle Bits, was there was a show, a, a video show, one of the first video shows in Vancouver called Good Rockin' Tonight. I didn't have a video because I wasn't in the business. Right. So they held up a compilation album of which Together was the lead song. And the album was called Together, a collection of love songs. And the song went up to number 11 on a video show with no video, wow. right? And the guy held up the uh, compilation cover and went, uh, here's together by, uh, who is this guy? Uh, Joey Gorash, uh, you know, and it's uh, number 11 this week without a video, you know? And the other thing was that year, there, it was a very thin year for gold records in Canada. And uh, I got a gold record. And again, I was doing skittle bits. I wasn't on the road. I wasn't even in the business. It was Glass Tiger, Corey Hart, Brian Adams and Joey Craigerash, <laughs> you know. Um, so it was, uh, you know, it was an incredible um, thing for a song to do based on the the public. I remember uh, the A and R guy h- here in Winnipeg that I was close to was uh, presented me my gold record on the Skittle the Show, Bruce Bondison, who is uh, still in Winnipeg and will be at I should mention the Earl Grey 100th reunion in May. Oh, uh, that's coming up. Uh, they've asked me to come along and sort of MC proceedings and be a part of the show, which uh, that comes up a little bit later. So uh, Bruce will be there, and uh, I can thank him again for presenting me with the gold record. But, it, you know, it's done some incredible things. It was never released in the States, and just recently we've got people calling or emailing from the States that just happen to hear this song. And there's one lady in, um, in uh, Dakota, uh, North Dakota, that obviously heard of the song uh that wants it at her wedding she just sent for the cd and the sheet music uh if i may sheet music you can call treadwells they have uh some of the last remaining sheet music of together um peter over there at treadwells has the sheet music uh any other information you want to know on it just go to my website joeygregorish.ca and i can fill you in on anything that you want to know about it but to the people of Winnipeg, Manitoba, where it started, you know, heartfelt thanks because I'll never, I'll never forget that beginning and the eventual um, tidal wave that this song had just because the people reacted. And I know this is probably not fair, but can you do, can you sing us like one verse? On this day we stand together and pledge our love to one another. Oh, my darling, I will love you. From this moment, there will be no other. And I had to look at Shelley when I was doing that. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right off the top, that's fantastic. Thank you Thank very you. much. You. We'll be right back with Joey Gregor after we take this break.
Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please join me for our Louis Riel Day show on Monday, February 16th at noon for a special edition of Food and Friends. My guest will be Ron Pradenick from Journeys Travel and Leisure Centre. And Ron's going to, he's traveled all over the world in his business, and he's going to tell us some great stories about some of his memorable trips. My guest today has been Joey Gregorish, and this has been a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Larry, for having me. And uh, you guys, as I said, special people, and uh, we've known each other for a bit now. And, uh, boy, you guys are uh, just terrific people. And what you've done for this community is also very special, so thank you. Well, uh, thank you for those kind words. JoeyGregish.ca if you want more information. Right. And you're also... Uh, oh, I'll be at Club Region Event Center. I've been with, uh, let's say, the Lotteries now 16 years oh, really? as their MC of uh, choice for the shows. Tom Cochran on Monday, another great man. Tobin, life is a highway. I'm looking forward to that. So, thank you so much for being thank on you. Food and, and Friends. Thank you. And Earl Grey 100th, uh, go on their website, earlgrey100.ca, to find out more. Coming up in May. All right. Yes, sir. You take care. Take care, everybody, and thank please you. don't forget to eat your veggies. Yeah.